joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is local history recipes. I'm Elizabeth and as usual I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie tell us about your local history recipe. All right I will. So the whole thing with uh, this category was that we were kind of looking at the local history section on AADL.org, the Ann Arbor District Library website, and just trying to find some cool old recipes a little bit in honor of the bicentennial that we're celebrating right now. So not necessarily something like from way back when in the beginning, but something that's been um, archived since then by the library. So. The recipe that I found today is from uh, this cookbook called Favorite Recipes Volume 2 from St. Andrew's Tuesday Guild. It, pu it was published in 1977 and you can see the cookbook in its entirety on the local history section of our website. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's lots of stuff in there. Um, Lots of interesting stuff. This is always like a kind of hard category because the older recipes don't necessarily have um, ingredients that we use these days or measurements that we use these days. So um, the recipe that I found that I wanted to try it was for pistachio whip fruit salad. And this is by Theo Willard. And um, so it's a very, very simple recipe, but it was interesting because it calls for things like one large can of crushed pineapple and like one small carton of Cool Whip. And it's like, well, what is that in 1977 compared to 2024? So just went with it and decided to use the, the standard sizes that we have in our grocery store and um, threw it all together. So very, very simple. First thing that you do is to soften your Cool Whip. You just want to leave the carton out um, on the counter. This is just a eight ounce tub of Cool Whip, your standard size that you find. Just leave it out for like 10, 15 minutes and it'll get totally soft enough to work with. Um, and then you just pour in a one ounce package of instant pistachio pudding mix. And you mix that all together and then you add the rest of your ingredients, which is an eight ounce can of crushed pineapple, a 14.5 ounce can of mandarin oranges that have been drained, a 14.5 ounce can of fruit cocktail that has been drained. Mix all that together and you cover it, refrigerate it for, it says at least eight hours or overnight. I definitely tried this after about six hours and it was totally fine. Um, then when it's ready, you just serve it in small bowls. And I was putting a little maraschino cherry on top to make it cute. Um, I really liked this. I grew up eating ambrosia salad that was made in my family. And that's kind of similar, except it's got marshmallows and coconut in it. And not, it doesn't have the pistachio flavor, at least ours didn't. Uh, I really liked the simplicity of this with, without the coconut and the marshmallows in it. I thought it was better. I really, really enjoyed this. I've actually made it twice now, and I'm planning on making a double batch of it tonight to bring into our work potluck tomorrow. So uh, I really like this. This is great. It was super easy. I kind of like took an easy way out, but um, I thought it was awesome. That's so fun. Good for you. I saw a lot of those recipes that called for some of those like ingredients. And I was just like, uh, <laughs> like, I don't really know what I mean. I was just yeah. like, what is going to, but I'm proud of you for going for it. And I'm, I mean, like what, the way you describe it, it does sound good. Like all that stuff is like sugary and good and like nice flavor combination. So I hope I get to try it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, brought back memories of potlucks <laughs> and I'm sure I've had something like that before. Definitely. Definitely but, and yeah, as soon as you said uh, pistachio pudding, I was like, hey, yeah, I remember having something like that. Um, 
Very cool. All right. Looks May nice. I? Light. Yeah. Yeah. Beth, please tell us about your local history recipe. My local history recipe. Well, is I was looking through a lot of different uh, recipes, but when I finally landed on Dorothy's grape nuts custard, I was 100% down for that because I really love grape nuts. And I may, I might be showing my age, but I was kind of going down a rabbit hole on Reddit and there are fans of all ages of grape nuts. Um, so I put it on my yogurt, but this, so this is a custard. It's really super simple. It was two eggs, slightly beaten, a third of a cup of sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, two cups of scalded milk, which I learned was to heat up the fat, I guess. So there's a, and that's where you just not quite uh, boil it. It gets all milky or, you know, foamy around the edges. Uh, half teaspoon of vanilla. And then she said a third of a, this is Dorothy. Uh, well, actually the person that put, shared it was named Beth. Beth Chase Cunningham. Anyhow, combine the eggs, sugar, salt, mix milk gradually. I think the thing that took the longest was actually cooling the milk down. That did, that was one of the longest parts of the thing. Um, you put about one tablespoon of grape nuts into custard cups, make, it serves five. Um, and then you pour the, the custard mixture, the, the egg and milk together uh, and vanilla. And then you put, bake it in a pan of hot water for about 40, 45 minutes. And I have a picture of some that um, that I shared with the the kiddos, of course. Um, this the ones I have had whipped cream on them. It says to serve plain or with whipped cream or sweetened crushed fruit. I think the first one I tried, I did put some fruit on, but yeah, it was really good. I mean, custard is really a simple thing to make too. Um, I liked it. Very yeah, cool. I've never made custard before. I always find like the, you know, baking in the water dish sort of like intimidating. And I guess it probably shouldn't, but I'm just like, who wants to put all that together? But it does sound really good. And especially, so do the grape nuts stay crunchy at the bottom? Uh, no, they kind of soften, they soften up. up a little bit. That's cool. Yeah, they soften up. Yeah. It reminds me of like a graham cracker crust almost. Yeah. But it's almost, yeah. You know, when I, when my grape nuts do soften up sometimes in, in my yogurt, I do, it kind of reminds me of, of uh, graham cracker, but um, yeah. So another way to eat my grape nuts. <laughs> I'm pro grape nuts as well. Actually. Are you? Okay, good. Maybe yeah. I'll have to check out the Reddit community. So. <laughs> you might. Yeah. All right, Elizabeth, what was your local? Okay, let me pull it up. So this, my recipe is very simple. It came from a, a, a book, a cookbook or whatever that was assembled called Fare Thee Well 2. Oh, you uh, know what? I yeah. am sorry, but I didn't mention where I got it from, but that's Fare Thee Well. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yes. Mine's from Fare Thee Well 2, um, which is was assembled by the Ann Arbor Wellesley Club. Um, and um, anyway, yeah. Um, so uh that but fine whatever uh it was basically a put together to support wellesley college um so um uh my recipe is for um which is kind of funny so it <laughs> it's it's korean allegedly so it's called oyi namul so it's o-i-n-a-m-u-l and apparently oyi is cucumber um, however, this recipe is also by someone named Ann Patterson. So I was like, I don't, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know if who decided it was Korean. Perhaps she has Korean heritage or perhaps, you know, in the old days, it was just like, this is, has soy sauce. So it's Korean. I don't know. But anyway, I gave it a go and actually it was pretty good. So you take some cucumbers and you just slice them horizontally and then like slice them really thin. I almost think it would have been good to use like a, like a, what do you call those things? Like a ma mandolin um, to do like the super thin slices, which I would do next time, but it was fine. And then you um, salt them and just like let them sit for a little bit in a bowl and then um, squeeze them dry. 
And then you put them in a dry dish. And in the meantime, you've made a dressing, which was tablespoon of sesame oil, tablespoon of soy sauce, teaspoon of cayenne, teaspoon of crushed garlic. Um, it said two, two, two teaspoons of fresh green onion chopped, um, a teaspoon of sugar, and then some white vinegar to taste. So you put that all together. And then you basically just drizzle the dressing over these fresh cucumbers, toss and chill for a little bit and serve. And so um, this, I just wanted something light because it's been hot lately. And actually this was really delicious and really easy and like a very nice side dish. Um, I would make it again while grilling. Um, I've been getting lots of cucumbers lately. It's like getting to be that time of year. And um, yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, I, yeah, I nice little side dish, re light, refreshing um, sauce was good. I liked the addition of the fresh green onion, especially that was really nice on there. So um, thanks to Ann Patterson. And uh, it was, uh, it was good. And I, uh, I think I actually will keep this in my repertoire and I'll use a, a mandolin next time. And I think that would look really pretty if you could get them actually in like ribbons. So that's my plan. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, super simple, tasty, boom. Yep. It's funny, you know, I know that sesame oil is more utilized nowadays. And, you know, but I know. back then, I mean, unless you are, you know, cooking authentically, which I was surprised to see it in yeah. the recipe, but yeah, you know, cool. So I'm sure people well, have been using it forever, but. One thing I think I might toss in is like some kind of fresh herb just oh, yeah. for like, I thought maybe, I don't know, maybe cilantro, something. I don't know. I just thought that would be a nice, a nice little addition. So even, even parsley, parsley might yeah. not be good. Um, yeah. I could, I could definitely see making this. Like I would, we, we've been making a lot of like stir fry or fried rice, like as a summer side for that, I think would be awesome. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to try that. I think that we'd really like it. Yeah, it was it was really quite good. So cool, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Um. Okay. Well, uh, if we have no more comments, I will take us out and say thank you for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about, and do feel free to share your own in the comments. And uh, please feel free to join us next time when our theme is using yogurt. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share that little recipe with recipe share.